When you look at compact cars, the Mazda 3 has certainly made a strong name for itself. For years, if you wanted a sporty, stylish, and fun to drive compact car or hatchback, the Mazda 3 was always at the top of someone's list. So even with Redline, this car has had a long history. I've gotten a Mazda 3 to test ever since 2012 when we first started getting press cars. So when Mazda dropped off the latest 2018 version, it was a familiar sight with me. But with an all new generation Mazda 3 coming for 2019, how does this 2018 model stack up against newer competitors? That's what we're here to find out. So by now you guys should be really, really familiar with this generation Mazda 3. I've been showing you guys a review of this car ever since the third gen model came out back in 2014. And surprisingly today, even though there's so many new competition that's out on the market, this car still looks remarkably fresh. Mazda has made a couple of changes to it over the years. 2017 was kind of the biggest changes, but you kind of have to squint to really see it. Now this particular one is the Grand Touring hatchback model. It sits at the top of the totem pole in terms of the trim levels. And when you look at the front fascia, of course, Mazda introduced their Kodo design language on this car back in 2014 and it still looks great. You have this five-point chrome grille that goes into the headlight. It's got full LED headlights uh, on this particular trim because it's a GT. It's available on the Touring. Keep in mind though the turn signals are not LEDs but you do have LED high and low beams and an LED fog light. The headlights themselves also swivel. They're adaptive which is a nice feature. They're also automatic. Now this particular one is the machine gray exterior color. I believe it's a new color option for 2018. And then my tester also has the appearance package that gives you the front lower front fascia, the side skirt, and then the rear uh, fascia. And this car, I think, still looks really handsome, despite the fact that we have a new Civic, we have a new Elantra GT, we have a new Corolla hatch, uh, we have a new Cruze. I mean, this car still definitely stands out. So Mazda's designed something that really has aged well. Now, this particular one has these 18-inch graphite finished wheels, which look terrific. Uh, they definitely look big for this car. They fill out the wheel wells nicely. I really like how it kind of matches the machine gray exterior color and then it goes well with the lower uh, fascia or the lower skirt. Now this particular one being the hatchback I think is the better looking option. Some of you may disagree. You may prefer the sedan. The hatch model is actually a little bit shorter. Its wheelbase is around 104 inches long, a little bit shorter than a lot of its newer competition. Um, but in, if you look at the overall you know, proportion size of it, it's still roughly spat in the middle of all the other compact cars. Now at the back again, not really too many changes here. Mazda kind of gave it freshened taillights for 2017 that I showed you. And then you have a lower rear skirt here that the appearance package gives you. And then the hatch models will have the dual outlet exhaust, which definitely makes this car look a lot sportier. This car really has a Mazda Speed vibe. I'm just really sad that Mazda never gave us a Mazda Speed for this generation. Now, when you open up the hatch, being the hatch model, this one has more cargo space than the sedan. You're looking at around 20 cubic feet of space with everything up. If you fold down this, the rear seats, you get around 47 cubic feet of space, which pretty much matches the latest Honda Civic hatchback. First approaching the Mazda 3, you can see not much has really changed. When you look at the key fob, it's still the same key fob that I showed you on other Mazda products. Um, this one being the hatch doesn't actually have a trunk release. Uh, the sedans will give you that extra button. Uh, the key fob itself, this is standard across the board. Uh, you have to get the upper trims to get the intelligent access key, but there's no remote start on the key fob or in the Mazda Connect head unit. You have to get a dealer installed option, which I hear doesn't work very well. Mazda's a little bit behind the times in terms of remote start technology. Now, with this one having the intelligent access key to lock the door, just touch the button here to lock it. To unlock it, there's no sensor on the back of the handle. You have to touch the button again and that will unlock the door for you, which is uh, a nice feature. Um, looking at the interior at a glance, you can see it makes a very strong first impression. My tester being the GT has these black leather seats, which are pretty comfortable, pretty supportive. Um, you do get a six-way power adjustment for the driver's side, uh, which I, will, I wish it was an eight-way or even a 10-way. It doesn't have any power lumbar, so that does limit the actual comfort uh, versus some competitors are giving you a little bit more. There's also no memory seats. You can see there's actually a place on the seat where you could find it. Uh, on some of the higher end Mazdas, but overall the interior makes a pretty strong first impression. Mazda's always very good at making their interiors feel more luxurious in the competition. Now getting inside, you can see it still has a nice easy step in height. It's nice and low to the ground, which is what I like. It feels sportier when you first get into this vehicle. And then when you shut the door, it still sounds pretty nice when it shuts pretty much class competitive with the other new competition. Now, uh, having push button start is standard. Just put your foot on the brake, keep the key fob in here, 
and then push this button here to fire up the engine. Now you can see there's an active driving display that raises up. Mazda 3 has had this since this generation debuted. It's standard on this GT trim. You can see my tester has the 2.5 liter direct injection four cylinder. It's still a pretty smooth free revving engine, but we'll go into the test drive again. We'll see how it compares to all the newer competitors. Now, the gauge display, I'm pretty much over this gauge display. I don't really like it. I think it hasn't aged well. I don't like these two smaller screens to the side. I think the um, Radio Shack style old school LCD looks a little bit old. Mazda has a newer display that I've shown you in the CX-5 and the 6 where it's a full color LCD. Uh, this trim level gives you the big tack whereas this, the lower trim Mazda 3s will give you a big speedometer with the tack over here. Uh, I just think it's wasted real estate right here whereas this is just the gear indicator and the odometer. Um, looking at the rest of the interior, it still looks pretty nice. Mazda was the first to introduce the floating tablet style display with their seven inch Mazda Connect head unit. The materials are still soft touch plastic here on the upper portion, although it doesn't have some of the faux stitching that some competitors have introduced. Down here, it's also hard touch plastic. You have some uh, um, silver painted plastic and some chrome accenting the door handles, which looks nice. The door panels here are, are also soft touch, same material from the dash. You have really nice brown leather that's really soft and padded where your elbows will rest. There's a good little storage pocket here for your cell phone. The window is one touch automatic down and up for the driver. I was kind of hoping for the passenger, but maybe I'm asking too much. Over here, you have additional buttons here for your lane departure alert. The steering wheel was new for 2017. It's also a heated steering wheel, but the heating element is only on the actual sides here, not the top and the bottom. You have paddle shifters. You have all your different buttons here for your cruise control, for your audio switches and whatnot. Um, over here on the center stack, you can see it's pretty cleanly designed. You have three level heated seats, but no cooled seats, but you do have the heated steering wheel, which is nice. Dual zone climbing control is included on most trims. There's a nice little area here where you can store your phone. There's two USB ports there, uh, the SD card slot, and then an aux port. Now, um, going over here, let's talk a little bit about the head unit. Um, Mazda hasn't made any changes, so I'm not gonna go too much in depth with that. Applications is not applications like you'd expect. Instead, it just gives you your fuel economy, your HD traffic map, and then your uh, vehicle status. I'm going over here to the navigation display. You can see it's just a Garmin navigation system. Hasn't really changed. It could probably use an upgrade, um, but this is pretty comparable to what you're gonna see in like an aftermarket navigation system. Now, one thing this thing is still missing is no Android Auto and no Apple CarPlay. Mazda says it's coming. The 2019 6 is the first one to get it. However, nobody has seen that yet, so I'm not going to actually say it has it until we actually see one in a production Mazda. Uh, you can see here, the display itself, you know, it's pretty easy to navigate, although I don't like the way the favorites is laid out. Mazda kind of groups it over here. And if you want to add favorites, you have to constantly go back and forth to the station and then go here to add favorites, which is kind of annoying. This is also a touchscreen, as you guys remember. It's only a touchscreen when you guys have it in the actual in actual park. When you're driving, the touchscreen goes away, and then you have to use the Mazda Connect head unit or controller here. Um, when you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see it has a pretty basic backup camera. Um, no parking sensors, no trajectory, so that's something Mazda needs to upgrade. I believe the new 6 has a 360 camera system, which I'll have to try out when I do get that vehicle to test uh, later this month. Uh, traditional shifter here for the 6-speed automatic park reverse neutral drive manual mode. There's a sport mode here that basically just turns on a sport mode in the transmission programming. It doesn't actually affect the suspension or the uh, steering feel. Over here, there's a nice little lid that covers up the cup holders, good size cup holders, good storage, electronic parking brake, more storage over here with another uh, power outlet and then a pretty deep amount of storage, which is good for hiding your stuff. The seats, as I said, they're pretty comfortable, although I wish that they had more adjustability. It's a complete manual seat on the passenger side here. Don't expect to find lumbar. They're only heated. They look a little bit more basic, especially when you look at some of the newer competitors that have kind of more deeply bolstered seats, which would be nice. Above you, a standard, pano standard size sunroof, which is included on this trim. Don't expect to find a pano sunroof. Mazda does not do that yet on any car. And then over here, glove compartment. It's huge, which is good for storage. Overall, I think the interior has aged well. It's just lacking in the features. It feels relatively mid-pack in terms of roominess but most people are gonna be pretty impressed when you get into the interior of the latest Mazda 3. Now, when you look at the rear seat of the Mazda 3, it's always been on the smaller end for the segment. Now, I will say, I have driven a lot of new competition um, that has a similarly cramped back seat. Uh, this is definitely not one of the most spacious in the segment, but it's not bad if you need to carry two people in a pinch. You can see this is basically uh, matching the front seat where I had it to drive, and 
I'm five foot seven. I'm not very tall. My knees get pretty close to this. There is good foot space here, but I definitely have sat in cars like the Jetta, the new Civic, a uh, Corolla sedan that have more space in the back seat. But you do get some features here. There's an armrest here with two cup holders, no vents back here, no power outlets. So it is showing the age a little bit. And then the materials are hard touch plastic on the door panels, uh, which is in contrast to the soft touch plastic you see you get in the front seats. But overall, I mean, the Mazda 3's back seat is definitely on the cramped, more cramped side. So I'm hoping that they will improve that for the next generation. So underneath the hood, Mazda has not made any changes to the 3 ever since it first came out. You still have a choice of two different engines. Um, the 2.5 liter engine is the engine that you're going to find mostly on the hatchback. Mazda made it standard on the Touring and the GT trim. Your other option is a 2 liter 4 cylinder. This is part of the Skyactiv G engine family. It's gasoline direct injection with a high compression ratio, a special exhaust header. It still makes 184 horsepower and 185 pound-feet of torque. Now, Mazda is working on an all-new powertrain called the Skyactiv X, which is a compression ignition engine, a production or world's first, basically. Um, we don't have too much information on that engine yet. There's rumors that it's, you know, going to have close to 200 horsepower. It's also supercharged, but Mazda doesn't like you to talk about that. That's coming on the next generation three. However, this motor is tried and true. It's still, honestly, one of the most powerful engine, engines in the segment. You have to get, like, an Elantra GT Sport or a Nissan Sentra SR Turbo to get something with more power before you go step into the hot hatch categories like an SI or a GTI. And, you know, despite the fact this is pretty powerful and it's also a big displacement, it's rated at 26 in the city, 35 on the highway. Mazda allows you the choice of a six-speed manual and fully loaded, or you can get it with the six-speed automatic like, like my tester. Uh, it uses regular gas and all Mazda 3s are front wheel drive. Um, it weighs around 3,000 pounds. Let's get out on the road and see how it performs. So setting off in the 2018 Mazda 3. So I know this car very well. I mean, Mazda has sent me one, as I said, multiple times every year ever since this generation has come out. And you know what? It still surprises me. I mean, I had a chance to drive the new Civic, the new Corolla, the new Elantra GT, um, the latest Jetta. I mean, this car still has a lot of strengths to it. Um, and it really starts, you know, in the beginning from the driving dynamics. Mazda has done an incredibly good job with keeping this car feeling fresh and sporty. Let's put it into its sport mode here and put our foot down. I'm gonna turn off the traction control, see if I can get the tires to spin actually. A little bit. <laughs> okay, so the 2.5 liter engine, you know, it's a big engine by, you know, this class is this class standard. A lot of competitors have gone to smaller two liters or smaller than two liters with a turbocharger. Uh, and Mazda has decided to, you know, stick with this. This engine technology, you know, is relatively new. I mean, it's got direct injection. It's got a high compression ratio, 184 horsepower. It's pretty good amounts of power. And the engine itself, you know, it revs out nicely. Um, it's also pretty refined in the sense that I don't feel too much in terms of vibration uh, through the steering wheel and the pedals. The four cylinder noise, it can either sound decent or it can sound a little bit raspy. Um, there are times where I find myself, you know, thinking, you know, one or the other. It's got paddles as well for the six speed auto, which respond pretty good. Yeah, I mean, this car makes a really nice, strong first impression. It's a sporty feeling compact car, though I wouldn't I wouldn't call it Mazda Speed 3 good. I've still been waiting for Mazda to introduce a Speed 3 version of this generation, and it looks like we're not gonna have that we're not gonna get that. Mazda says don't expect to see a Speed 3 car at least until 2020 or 2021. So with 185 horsepower. This car will get to 60 in around the mid to high seven second range, um, which used to be one of the quickest numbers in the segment. However, that's really not the case anymore when you've got these new turbo options, which will do it in like under seven seconds, like the new Civic Hatch, the Elantra Sport GT. Uh, those are just a few to come to mind. Um, this car definitely feels very similar to the new Corolla hatchback that I last drove. They both have naturally aspirated engines. Um, this, this engine is fine, and I'm sure it's very reliable. It's relatively economical. It just is a little uninspiring at times. It's kind of, you know, why Mazda is developing their new Skyactiv-X engine technology uh, with that, you know, compression ignition, which is 30% more efficient. It's got a little bit more power. It's got a supercharger, apparently. Um, but overall, I think that the engine itself could just use a little bit more 
grunt, a little bit more noise. It's something that I would like to see Mazda eventually do, um, you know, and which they're saying is coming for the next generation model. Now, handling is where the Mazda 3 has also pretty much always allowed it to shine. The steering in this car is just telepathic. Um, it's really direct, it's quick, it feels great. I mean, I pretty much benchmark the class this as the class standard for steering feel, and the Honda Civic is basically right up there. The new Elantra GT Sport is right up there. The latest Corolla, I can't believe I'm saying this, is also very, very good. So the Mazda 3 is no longer the only game in town for sportiness. So where does that leave it, you know, in the rest of the segment? Well, um, you know, it's pretty much left it right where it's always been, but you're kind of, you can kind of see, you know, a few dents in the Mazda 3's armor, whereas, you know, a lot of the competitors have caught up. Mazda definitely needs to, you know, do what they need to do to make this vehicle a little bit more stand outish in the class besides just you know a beautiful styling on the outside and a relatively nice interior but I mean overall I think that um, the fact that they never came out with a speed 3 for this generation kind of was very disappointing um, engine the engine technology is where Mazda's kind of fallen behind well, let's talk a little bit about the six-speed automatic transmission in this car because it's still a very good transmission it will downshift pretty quick when you put your foot down um, it has very good rev matching when you use the paddle shifters. Uh, and I think that it'll satisfy most of you, especially if you guys don't like a CVT and some of the competitors, this is, you know, the, you know, a really great six-speed automatic. I, I do want to see Mazda eventually move their engine technology or their transmission technology to an eight-speed automatic, uh, just because there are times where I am noticing the fact that it only has six gears, whereas two more gears would really help keep the engine in the meat of its power band. Um, you know, there was a time where we said six, speed, six speeds was a great amount of gears, and now I really have seen, you know, some of the trans, some of the competitors use eight-speed auto, autos, and they're just an even better transmission when keeping this car in the meat of its power band. <laughs> and the Mazda 3 will still spin out its tires because it still has 184 or 85 pound-feet of torque, especially when you turn off the traction control, and then when you really start hustling it, this is where the Mazda 3 really shines. <laughs> it still feels good. This is still a great feeling car. The chassis is just begging for more power, which makes me sad because the Speed, for, the speed 3 never came out. But uh, in terms of fuel economy, uh, let's talk a little bit about, about that. This car is rated to get 26 in the city, 35 on the highway. I've been averaging 25 in my week's worth of testing and mostly city driving. This car is also pretty new, so it's not fully broken in. On the highway, I got it up to about 33 miles per gallon. So the Mazda 3's fuel economy is definitely starting to fall a little bit behind, but I'm okay with that just because uh, it's still a really pleasantly fun to drive vehicle. But I mean, if you are looking for a compact car, you're refusing to buy an SUV, so bravo on you. Um, this car definitely is still very much worth a look. Um, compared to the Corolla hatch, the two cars feel very similar with their naturally aspirated engines. Handling is very, very similar as well. It's pretty much comparable to the Civic hatchback as well that I last drove. The Elantra GT Sport uh, with its dual clutch definitely is quicker, but I would probably skip the dual clutch on that because I don't like the way it shifts. I'd go for the six-speed manual. Again, you can get this with a six-speed manual as well. But, you know, the Mazda 3 is still just a great choice uh, in this segment. And, you know, if you don't need, you know, care to have the newest offerings, uh, this car still feels relatively fresh and it'll still, it still has the ability to put your smile on, the on your face while being an excellent daily driver to boot. So because Mazda has given me this car every year ever since this generation has come out, I've become very familiar with it. And I still think it's an, a really attractive car. I think the exterior in particular has aged well. It still looks surprisingly new. There's a lot of people who look at this and don't even realize that the design has date, dates back to 2013. So what about the rest of the car? Well, the interior is probably the most dated aspect. The infotainment system needs a redo. Uh, I would like to see Mazda upgrade the instrument panel where it looks a little bit old. Uh, and the, the interior itself is relatively spacious, but some competitors offer more back seat space, which may be a deal breaker for some. In terms of the driving dynamics, it's still one of the most fun to drive vehicles in the class with a great transmission, great steering. The engine, while it is somewhat unremarkable at times, this car used to be the quickest in the segment, but it's definitely been outshined by a lot of its turbocharged competitors. So if you wanna buy one of these, what's it gonna to cost to put this in your driveway? Well, the Mazda 3 still is relatively inexpensive. It starts at around 17,500 for a sedan. The hatchback is a little bit more. This starts at around 19,300. Um, this particular one being the GT starts at around $24,000. And then my tester has like a premium package, the uh, appearance package. So all in this one's around 29,500, which again, I know it sounds like a lot of money, but keep in mind compact cars 
cars get that expensive when you go with the high ends, and a lot of its competitors also are on the same rate. So if you're looking for a car like this and you guys want something that's sporty, that's fun to drive, and you're okay with the infotainment system not being so as up to date, this one still definitely deserves to be at the top of your list. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.